Chapter 14, Introduction to Linear Regression and Correlation Analysis. In this video, we'll learn how to calculate the simple linear regression equation and to determine if the model is significant. Simple linear regression is a statistical method that's used to describe the linear relationship between two variables. In section 14.1, you learned how to develop a scatter plot. This continues our analysis of our relationship by looking to see if there is a linear relationship that can be plotted on our scatter plot. Simple linear regression analysis is when we use a single independent variable denoted x to explain the variation in our dependent variable y. So in our example here, in our x-axis, we can see this is the years worked at Midwest Company, and our y-axis, or our y variable, which is the dependent variable, is the sales achieved. With simple linear regression analysis, we are trying to find the best fitting line that best represents the relationship between these two variables. Here is the population model for the simple linear regression, which represents the relationship between x and y. y is our dependent variable. This variable will depend on the information in the formula to determine its value. x is our independent variable that we're hoping to see if there is a relationship that may explain what's going on with y. Our beta sub zero is our population's y-intercept. This is the constant in our model. Beta sub one is the slope of the population regression line. The slope tells us the direction of our relationship if any exists, whether it's positive or negative. Together, these two are the regression coefficients that will be used to explain the model. Epsilon is the random error term which we're trying to minimize. We won't focus on it too much in this chapter. So let's look at the meaning of our regression coefficients more closely. So the regression slope coefficient, our beta sub one, this measures the average change in the value of our dependent variable y for each unit change in x. So if we see a positive slope for each unit of x, our y will go up by the slope amount. Similarly, if our slope is negative, we'll see a decrease for each unit change in x. With our intercept, or our beta sub zero, this is the value of y when x is zero. So if we imagine our regression line, this is where the line crosses the y-axis. It's how high it starts up on our chart. The least squares criterion is how we will find the best fitting line. Here, we are trying to find a line that minimizes the sum of squared prediction errors or residuals. The residual is the difference between our actual value of the dependent variable and the predicted value from the regression model. So our regression model here in the figure is this line, and here's the regression model right here, or the equation. And so here with this uh, line, we are predicting where data will fall. However, we know in real world, data does not fall neatly on a line. And so we have these dots here that represent the actual values or the actual coordinates of an employee in terms of how many years that they work at the company and their sales in thousands of dollars. And so the residual is the difference between my dots, my actuals, and my line, the predicted value. Thanks to calculus, there are equations that let us find the slope and intercept estimates needed to de develop our regression model. Since we can't study the entire population, we have to use an estimated regression model based on sample data. So our formula gets simplified uh, down to the pieces that we will use in order to estimate our regression model. This y with a little hat over it, this is our predicted y value. Uh, our beta sub zero is now a lowercase b sub zero, and this represents our intercept still. And here's the formula here on the left our b sub 1, or our slope. This is the formula over here to the right. And then our x is the value of the independent variable. Now while we have equations here to help us find the intercept and the slope, we'll be using Excel. The textbook shows examples of the manual calculations, which can be quite intensive. So our goal when finding the best fitting line is to find the line with the smallest sum of squared residuals possible of our sample data. So to do the simple linear regression and correlation analysis, 
we first want to specify our independent or x variable and our dependent or y variable. So you want to be careful to identify the x and y variables correctly. Just think, the independent variable is what we think might explain our dependent variable, and our dependent variable is what we're interested in understanding or predicting using our model. In step two, we will develop a scatter plot, which you've done already, and this will just help graphically display the relationship between our variables. And then in step three, we'll calculate the correlation coefficient and the linear regression equation. So we'll go ahead and do problem 25 for practice. A regional retailer would like to determine if the variation in average monthly store sales can, in part, be explained by the size of the store measured in square feet. This is a continuation of problem 12 that you saw in the last video. So in part A, we're asked to compute the simple linear regression model using the sample data to determine whether variation in average monthly sales can be explained by store size. We'll go ahead and interpret the slope and intercept coefficients as well. Now when we're working on this, it's helpful to scan some of the other pieces so that you know what's to come. We can see in part B, we'll be doing a test for significance at a level of uh, 0.05. And we'll also be working uh, in part C regarding the percentage of total variation. So switching over to Excel on tab 25, we're, we'll continue our analysis here specifically for regression. So to run the regression analysis, we'll go to data and then data analysis. And you'll want to click on regression. Now you want to be very careful. The first thing it asks for is the input of the Y range. So this is where we have to identify our dependent variable. The dependent variable in our story that we were interested in understanding was the average monthly sales. That's in column B. So don't just select the first column. We want to be careful and read and make sure we identify the correct Y and X variables. So clicking on my box here, it'll take me out to my data and I can go ahead and select carefully all my data values. Make sure to scan all the way through so that you don't accidentally miss a data point because that will affect your information. Clicking back on the box, it takes me back in. And then I want to input my X range. My X or my independent variable in this case is our store size in square feet. Clicking on my box, I will go ahead and highlight my X variable data. Uh, I did include my labels in the top so that when I run my regression analysis, my tables will be labeled accurately checking labels. Now for the confidence level, this is the complement of our level of significance. So recall I suggested scanning the problem to see if the, any other information was provided. So the level of significance uh, that was given in the problem was 0 0.05. So I'm going to click on the confidence level and if my level of significance is 0 0.05 then my confidence level is 95% or 0.95 because the two are complements of each other. And then I will go ahead, uh, you can check on residuals here if you want to see all the residual data. So this is the errors between our actual values and our predicted values. Now if you click OK, this will take you to a new tab. Or if you prefer, you can click on the output range and choose to place it on the same tab um, as our data. So I'll go ahead and do the output range so I can have it side by side. I'm just going to put it right here. And again, if you're going to use the output range, you want to be careful that you place it in a blank area because it will overwrite anything if there's uh, text or numbers down in here. So clicking OK, now my summary output appears. And I'm going to scroll over and take a look at it. Now you might note that there is this number E here, and that is scientific notation. So to get rid of that, there's a couple of ways we might try. We can either use the decimals here and move it across. And I generally like four decimal places. And that got rid of my scientific notation. Or you can just change the formatting to say number as opposed to scientific. So you can see here's the scientific notation option if you see a letter E somewhere in the number. It just means it's very small, so it's notating it uh, in this way. I'll do the same thing in my lower table here clean up. See, I see another E right here, so that's my scientific notation. So let's see, yep, my decimals will allow me to get rid of the scientific notation. Okay. And down below here is our residual output, so we can see um, the difference between our actual and predicted values. So again, 
these were our actual values, and the predicted value is based on the, the regression equation that we get from our analysis output here. So I'm going to bring over the information I need in my regression analysis back to the slide so we can um, interpret what it means. So we're actually just going to use this third table down here to do our regression analysis. Um, note we have some information up here as well uh, related to our correlation. Recall uh, when we did problem 12, our correlation was 0.8515. That's this number right here. Uh, on our observations, we had 21 stores. So our table here gives us a lot of information that we'll be looking at um, at different times uh, throughout the video. And then here, the ANOVA table, we'll learn more about this in Chapter 12, but we will touch on it a little bit in this chapter as well. So bringing over our regression output, so we can just focus on our data here. It's helpful to note what's our B sub 0 and our B sub 1. So recall our intercept is our B sub 0. And one way to remember that is this is what our Y value is when X is 0. This is where our line will cross the Y axis. And our B sub 1 is our slope. In this case, it's the store size in square feet. We'll first examine our regression coefficients. This is what we'll use to create our regression equation. To explain this, our Y variable, or our dependent variable, which is our sales, is equal to our intercept plus our slope based on the store square feet. We are hoping to see how much of this variable can possibly explain our average monthly sales. So plugging in our coefficients, my B sub 0 and my B sub 1, we get that the average monthly sales for our regression equation is 171,205.83 plus 25.32 for the slope of our square feet. Note that we have a positive if our slope is positive, in that there's no negative symbol here. If there had been a negative symbol, we would change this to a minus. Now what does this mean? We need to interpret each piece. First, our intercept, this is the estimate for our average monthly sales when our independent variable x, the store size, is zero. Now we know it's not possible to have a store size of zero square feet, so we don't actually need to interpret the intercept too much in this scenario. What's more important is the slope, so this 25.32 regarding our square footage or our store size. The slope shows us how the average monthly sales will change as our store size is changed by one square foot, and we know this is a positive increase. So for each square foot increase, the average monthly sales are also predicted to increase. Specifically, it will increase by $25.32. So we want to go ahead and write out our regression equation properly. So we would write it as our y is equal to our intercept plus our slope times our x. So this will be the square footage of an actual store. Make sure to watch the next video, which will explain how to do testing for significance to see if our regression model is significant or not.